So over two weeks ago, I decided that I wanted to make a big change in my life and that I really just wanted to quit sugar and processed foods from my diet and just see how I went. And, you know, of course we all know about the, the bad kind of things about it, but I just wanted to take it into my hands and actually try and make a conscious effort to make a control over it. You know, because these things can become particularly insidious and subtle, you know, they just kind of sneak up on you and then your mind kind of convinces you like, you know, it's okay if you just eat a cookie today, you know, you've had a long day, you've been through a lot, you know, it's okay. And it sounds so convincing and it seems like so right, like, oh yeah, why don't, why don't I just have a cookie, you know, like, this guy's telling me that I should in my head, like, I may as well. But then you kind of just keep letting these excuses creep in and then all of a sudden it just kind of, the, the floor falls underneath you and you fall into like the pit. And you and I found myself just, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I'm not eating that bad. I'm eating fairly healthy, you know. I'm cooking my own meals, you know. I've stopped having honey with my oats, and that was a big step. And you know, like I can have these kind of things, but you know, eventually it just kind of creeps up. And then all I was like, looking at the point where I was just looking around and seeing like, oh, this is not how I want to live. This is not how I want to keep eating. And this is not what I want my relationship to food to be. This is not how I want to live my life, you know, reliant on this food source, on this, like, that's the best part of my day. Like, that's such a sucky kind of thing. And also there's this, a whole other component to it. Like me having the best part of my day was having food, which can be a nice kind of thing, you know. But for me, that was healing up and filling the kind of hole for my negative feelings to make me feel just okay to get along with my day like I was doing rather than working on things working on something that would get me somewhere where I would prefer to be where I'm more independent and more like relying on myself rather than on this food you know and that's just what I wanted to want and so you know this is kind of a funny story because there's a there's an important lesson that I come around to at the end but I want to start with saying, you know, we all know the effects that it has on us. You know, it's bad for you, it spikes up your insulin and then you have a drop and then you get an adrenaline hit when you're down there, which makes you kind of feel negative and bad. And then you want another hit, but then eventually you adapt to it and then you need that food, you need that hit of dopamine, whatever it is, to kind of feel normal. And that's a terrible way to live, you know. And of course, you know, eating food can lead to diabetes, and it has a, a massive effect on your moods and you know your mood swings and all that sort of things you know and you know if you want to see if you're addicted to something then try quitting it for a couple of weeks and if it's difficult and you get withdrawals and you're just like oh i just want to do it oh, then you're, you're probably addicted and probably very reliant on this substance or whatever it is and so i decided i wanted to make a drastic change you know I just wanted to cut it out, you know, I didn't want to do it anymore. I was just going to eat all vegetables, all whole foods, all meat, and maybe a bit of butter and salt. And that was how I was going to make my meals taste nice. And so I did, you know, and it worked for two weeks. Well, there were some downsides, but it did make my health markers seem a lot better. You know, I wore a whoop to kind of check and see what the effects that it had on me. And my resting heart rate, you know, was floating around before you know 57 58 and then sometimes we'd be up in the 60s which wouldn't be very which would be kind of normal but i'd never had it that kind of high before and then after a week after a couple of days of having the fruit and veggies a lot of fruit and veggies and the oats and you know chicken and beef just like a little bit of the meats my heart rate was consistently at 44 54 55 and then actually got down to about 50 and it would stay around the 50 to 55 kind of range. And I was totally shocked. And like my heart rate variability was up very high in the 70s and the 80s, much higher than it would usually be. And I was shocked. I'm like, this is actually a big change. Like this is actually something like I may feel a little bit better, but like with these kind of stats, immediate change, like immediate change I saw. And you know, even though those things were kind of nice and I did have some nice benefits from it, you know, I was getting a lot of cravings and these were the kind of cravings that had me, I got slight headaches and I was just 
all I could do was just lay on the floor and I was just kind of pulling back my hair, just like trying not to give in to those impulses and trying not to give in to it. And you know, what I realized was that this should not be a challenge. This shouldn't be this hard. And I was kind of wondering why it was. And it was because I hadn't set up my environment to give me success. You know, I was in this unideal environment at work. I was set, having all these different cues to all these sugary foods and coffee and all these kind of things, you know, and so I had to keep fighting the impulses because I was getting all these cues bombarded into my brain and I had to keep, keep, um, a very tight hold on myself to not give in to that during those two weeks. And, you know, after those two weeks kind of went, I was just like, oh, you know, it's okay if I just have some bread now, some bread and some cheese and butter, you know, like a toasty, like that'd be all right. And then that just kind of collapsed and all of a sudden, all of like the, the wave that had been holding back, like I was a dam, I was a human dam. All of a sudden that just went, and I just, lost control and I started eating just even in our house in in our higher household because at the moment I still live I've moved back with my family and you know I can't choose what they have and you know they do eat rather healthy but there are a lot of packaged foods and stuff around and it's not very nice to have that there and have those cues hitting you all the time which is just making even more effort to do something that's already hard to do you know like you need to set up your environment for success, otherwise you're not gonna be able to get through it because you're just adding more struggle, adding more pain, adding more cues to your old behaviors that are just already so well ingrained in my head. And it just made me realize like, oh, you know, like these challenges, these 30 day challenges that are so, that are so big, you know, these two week challenges of doing this and of meditating and all these kind of things, you know, and, it seems very sexy. It seems like, oh, this is amazing. Like, I, I want to do this challenge. It'll seem so cool. And, you know, maybe my life will change and I'll feel really great about it. And as I said, even though I did get some benefits from it, I felt kind of better. I didn't feel super better. And, you know, this has to be something that's a sustainable habit. habit. It has to become a behavior change. And to do that, we have to create habits. And it's hard to get rid of our old habits and it takes a couple months to implant new ones into our brains, you know? Like atomic habits, it seems almost too easy. Like, oh, I don't wanna just do 10 push-ups a day, you know? Like, I've pumped a lot of iron before, you know? Like, I've done a full massive workout and like, the next day I was completely sore, so I should be able to keep doing that. But if you don't have the baseline, if you don't have a set foundation to build from, then you're gonna keep collapsing because whatever you build on there is just gonna be wonky. It's just not gonna be able to stand or anything. And so that's one of the most important things that I learned from this, you know? And another point that I wanna make is if you are trying to quit sugar and processed foods is at the start, like in ultra processed people, I think it's by Chris Van Teleken, you know, Dr. Chris and Dr. Zahn from like Operation Ouch. He, did a, he does, he, he did a book, he wrote a book about these processed foods and the effects that it has on us. And it's quite scientific. If you don't wanna watch it, then just watch his kind of little clip that he did about it, 30 days, like 80% processed food, and also check out that sugar film. But what he kind of recommended was that you, that you just allow yourself to eat those things, but look at the ingredients and like, look them up and then see what the effects are. It's like, oh, there's this thing, there's this thing, there's this thing. Oh, what, what, what's this cane sugar thing? It's like, oh, it's just another term for sugar, you know, like they've just kind of made it look all nice. And it's like, oh, look, this protein shake looks like it's all natural, you know, it looks great. But then it's got like 20 grams of sugar in it or something. And that's like almost the daily limit that an adult man should have. And it's quite crazy to think these things. But anyway, I just wanted to share this kind of idea and this experiment that I had with myself and I hope you can kind of get something from it. And I really want to iterate that you have to start small, you know, and your environment is a massive factor to doing that. And if you want to change, then you should look at changing your environment first, you know, and if you can't do that, then you have to work on something, create something that will work for you and just build up these little habits because it sounds really unsexy. It sounds so boring, like, oh, I don't want to just 
cook one meal a day that's going to be healthy and then eat normally because like what the hell is that going to do that's just no point to doing that but this is where it all starts from this is how you build up your skills and how you build it up because if you think about it what's what hasn't worked for me is always trying to make these big changes i get so excited and i try and make these massive changes and they never last they never stick through and i don't have anything to show for these things like Sure, I could be healthy for a couple of weeks, I could be healthy for a month, but being consistently healthy, working out consistently, <laughs> recording these videos consistently, you know, I've always struggled with, and that's because I haven't got myself into the habit of doing these things and making them easier and reinforcing the habit and just going through it, you know, making it a habit so it sticks into my life. Because, you know, habits are like the foundation of our life. And I'm going to be talking about this kind of idea more in future videos, so stick around if you'd like to. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.